Hello everybody, welcome to lecture 12 of our course Computing, Ethics and Society. We are still in chapter 4, Intellectual Property, and the topics to be covered in this lecture, search engines and online libraries, and free software. Let's start with search engines and intellectual property, or copyrighted work. Catching and displaying small excerpts is fair use. Also, creating and displaying thumbnail images is also fair use. In 2007, a group of Belgian newspapers claimed they lose revenue from subscription fees when Google displays headlines, photos, and excerpts from their news archive. They won a lawsuit against Google. In response to similar lawsuits and disputes with other news services, Google negotiated licensing agreements to copy and display headlines, excerpts, and photos. Now, Box Online. Project Gutenberg digitizes box in the public domain. Two large companies, Microsoft and Google, work on this. Microsoft scanned millions of public domain box in University of California's library. Google has scanned millions of box that are in the public domain and that are not. They display only excerpts from those still copyrighted. Some court rulings favor search engines and information access. Some favor content producers. Tools for authorized sharing, creative commons, enables an author to specify permissions for the sharing. Now let's move to interesting topics that is software or free software. So what is free software? Free software is an idea advocated and supported by large loose knit group of computer programmers who allow people to copy, use and modify their software. Free here means freedom of use, not necessarily lack of cost. Open source software is the software distributed or made uh, public in source code. That means the source code of this software is readable and modifiable. On the other hand, commercial softwares <clears throat> which is often called proprietary software is normally sold in object code the code run by the computer but not intel intelligible to people it's not modifiable by the end user the source code is kept secret critics and some supporters of free software point out some of its weaknesses much free software is not easy for ordinary consumers to use often there is no technical support number to call for help because anyone can modify free softwares there are many versions and few standards creating a difficult and confusing environment for non-technical consumers and businesses. Here is an example. GNU project. This project begin with a Unix-like operating system. It's a, uh, it is a sophisticated text editor and, and many compilers and utilities. Now, GNU has hundreds of programs freely available and thousands of software packages available as free software with modifiable 
source code it's developed the concept of copy left free software has many advantages with freely distributed software more people can use and benefit from a program with source code available any of the uh, of thousand of programmers can find and fix bugs users and programmers can adapt and improve programs under copyleft the developer copyrights the program and releases it under an agreement that allows people to use modify and distribute or any program developed from it but only if they apply the same agreement to the new work no one may develop a new program from a copy lifted program and add restrictions that limit is use and free distribution courts have said a person can sue for an injunction against someone who uses copy lifted software without following the open source licensing agreement free software is undoubtedly valuable but does it provide sufficient incentives to produce the huge quantity of consumer software available now how are free software developers paid programmers donate their work because they believe in the sharing ethic most programmers work for a salary even if they write free software on their own time would the extra services for which a business could charge bring in enough revenue to support all software development richard stallman believes is that proprietary software particularly the aspects that uh, prohibits people from making copies and changes in programs without the software publisher's approval is ethically wrong he argues that copying a program does not deprive the programmer or any one else of use of the program uh, we reach to the end of this lecture and see you in next lecture goodbye